My name is Ramon. I am a student at the University of Illinois, double majoring in engineering and business. Today I will be interviewing Allison Leibovich. Allison is a technical account manager at Cargill, but Allison is also a member of IFT. IFT stands for the Institute of Food Technologies. IFT's mission is to advance the science of food and its applications across the global food system. Hello, Allison. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So my first question for you is, what initially drew you to the science of food as a career path? Yeah, I when I was younger, I loved cooking and baking with my mom and my grandmother. It was just something that we bonded over. All holidays always involved us being in the kitchen together, a lot of childhood memories. And I noticed that a lot of the science experiments I had through my elementary, junior high, and high school always had to deal around food. So growing plants, how long does it take a loaf of bread to go moldy? Mm. And when I was in high school, I ended up um, experimenting with, you know, I wanted to make a loaf of bread, but what would happen if you halved the flour or doubled the salt? How would that change the color, the texture? You know, you cut into it, does it look the same on the inside? So it's all like just really curious. And I didn't mm. really realize until after the fact that all of these things always related back to food. So when I went to the state science fair competition when I was in high school, I ended up meeting someone there from Pillsbury. And so they told me about food science and human nutrition. And I had never heard of that before. I didn't know that was a career path you could go down. And so once I heard about that in my sophomore year of high school, I started looking into it and I got curious about how food companies like General Mills and Target and Dairy Queen create great tasting products. And I learned about foodborne pathogens and uh, like E. coli and salmonella, things we hear about maybe in the news. And it just got me into this area, but I didn't realize I could combine my love of food uh, with my love of science and then actually pursue a degree in food science. So that's how I heard about it and got into the, the field. Awesome. Cool. So like a passion became a profession. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty fortunate in that regard. Yeah. Lucky on that end. Okay, so my second question for you is, uh, what high school courses or college courses have you found to be the most applicable or most important for your occupation? Yeah, something I love about food science is that you get to take all of these great disciplines you learn about in high school and college. So you think about chemistry, biology classes, physics, calculus, you get to then extend those and go deeper when you're in college. So then my courses I still took chemistry and organic chemistry and biology, microbiology. But then as I got older into my coursework as an undergrad and graduate student, everything became applied to food. So you got to take food chemistry, food microbiology, food processing, food engineering, food quality assurance. So the beauty of food science is that it's taking a lot of these disciplines maybe people have heard about before, and then we actually just get to talk about it in terms of food and beverages. So for me, I would say a lot of the science background, um, but also the other courses then, those are the hard skills that you can learn in school, but we also learned a lot of the soft skills. So we took courses in public speaking uh, in undergrad, and then you actually start applying those to the, the realm of how do you communicate as a food professional to people who may not be as familiar with it? So you think about maybe a, a dietitian or someone who's in nutrition, right? They're meeting with people to help educate them about their health journey. Well, food scientists too, right? We have a, a role to help people be educated about where their food comes from, where it's, you know, how we keep it safe. We have the Food and Drug Administration as one entity in the government side, but we are here to also help people understand, you know, non-GMO, I get a lot of questions about and organic and vegan and as consumers, right? And food is very emotional. So being able to communicate technical knowledge um, to a lay audience is really important skill to develop. Awesome, cool. Um, so my, my next question is, how did you engage with IFT or Feeding Tomorrow, the foundation of IFT as a yeah. student or as a new professional? Yeah, IFT is really unique in that it encompasses uh, the food industry, food academia, so you think about universities, uh, and food government, so the FDA, other organizations that are trying to keep food safe. And they do that both domestically here in the U.S., but as well as, well as internationally. So you have this opportunity to meet people from all over the world who are also talking about food and their love for you know, feeding the world. 
So IFT actually has a student association, so you can get involved either in a leadership structure, they have a president and an election process, or they actually have chapter level um, engagement that you can participate in. So as a student, I was involved in College Bowl, which essentially, right, we're talking about technical knowledge and all of these like hard science classes, but you get to then compete with other food scientists on the knowledge that you've acquired. So you, their questions might be around the temperatures uh, that certain reaction happens or a certain organism, or my favorite one was always, what's the address of IFT? We always had to know that one as a, a colorful <laughs> question. <laughs> um, but then as I, after a graduation, they did a really nice job of continuing to build engagement with new professionals. So they had a new professionals work group uh, that I was able to help participate in. So at our annual meeting, we would organize a social get together. We had webinars that we put together, um, just giving new professionals a voice within the organization. And then they also developed a program called Emerging Leaders Network, which is an in-house uh, opportunity and platform for new professionals to meet people across industry, academia, and government. But they also get to engage with people who are, serve on the IFT board of directors, people who are involved in Feeding Tomorrow, and be able to start forming connections that could sustain them throughout their career journey. So a lot of networking, a lot of exposure and perspective that IFT helps provide, both as a student and new professional. And now I've been serving on our division, our marketing sales and management division. So we help uh, give voice to those members and ensure that their needs are being met. So it's pretty unique how IFT can span a lot of different disciplines and regions as well. It sounds like you get to do a lot even as a new member. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think anything in life is what you put into it. So if you yeah. choose that, you could just be a member, but if you choose to step up and get involved, I think more opportunities will present themselves. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so describe what your typical work day entails. I love this question because right now <laughs> one ever has a typical day. <laughs> yeah. I'll say for me, it's changed over time. So when I was an un undergrad, I was really fortunate to apply for internships and get accepted. So in my intern experience, I worked in a manufacturing plant. So every day I had to put a hard hat on, you have steel toed boots, you're walking up and down throughout the operation floor, right? Very different, like surprising things. Like you couldn't wear perfume. You really, you couldn't have nail polish on. You couldn't have you know, glass or metal within those facilities or wood. Like you had to be really careful about what you wore into and out of that facility because you're producing food and you wanna keep it safe for people. Then I also worked in a bench top setting. So imagine like a commercial kitchen, essentially. So you're wearing a lab coat, a hairnet, like you're in the lab working, measuring, weighing ingredients, producing them on a small scale. Then you have a pilot plant. So that's where you have your steel toe boots again, but once again, it's lab coat, hair net, you're making and iterating experiments, you're using smaller versions of the large scale production equipment, uh, very much coordinating and collaborating with other people because you're not going to be working in that setting by yourself. Then I've worked in an office environment where it's you and your computer and your phone and you're in meetings and trying to connect with people and trying to work through influencing and you're not necessarily the one making the decision or make performing the task, but you're encouraging others and holding them accountable to now within my technical services role, I have visibility, right, to benchtop developers who are doing the work. So my role is that every day I might come in and someone needs a new ingredient, they need help with a recommendation, they're not quite sure what to do or what to use. They're coming up with either a brand new product out in the market or they're trying to reformulate. So they take their existing recipe, so to speak, and they need to change out some of the ingredients. So I help advise them on what they should approach doing. I also work with my, my team who oversees our uh, product line. So we think about all the ingredients that are out there, starches, flours, oils, chocolate, salts. There's a whole team that's there that to help commercialize those products and help sell them and help communicate those to our customers who aren't necessarily consumers. 
Um, so you can think about like the big food and beverage companies um, that people are helping supply the ingredients that they then produce that go out into store shelves that you're gonna go buy. Maybe you buy a pop or a yogurt or a granola bar. A food scientist touched one of those at some point. Cool, so it sounds like you're kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to this field. Um, yeah. Uh, you got yeah. all over the place. What what would you say you enjoy more? You like the office space or do you like being in the, you know, on the floor, you know, doing the nitty gritty uh, um, steel toe thing? It's evolved. I think today, yeah. um, normally when it, we would be able to be out and traveling and seeing the world, I'd be on an airplane going and flying to meet with people one on one. And I really, really enjoy that side of being able to connect with them and have that face to face interaction. Of course. Um, but I, I do like cooking and baking is one of the most relaxing things. That's what I spent my whole weekend doing. <laughs> so it's like sometimes when you do that every day for a job, right, then you don't have that energy when you come home. So it's a balance. But I, yeah, I think I like the being able to help influence and persuade people rather than uh, be the one maybe on the bench top that's doing the work. So okay. I'm glad I had cool. that experience, but I like what I'm doing now. Nice. That's good. So how has your participation in IFT or Feeding Tomorrow impacted your career success? Yeah, I, I don't think I would be where I am today had I not been involved in a professional organization, especially with IFT. IFT has done a really great job of being able to help connect me with other people out in the industry who I never would have met otherwise. Sometimes when you first start off in the industry, you can be very centered on your company and your organization. And so IFT has helped broaden my perspective to help connect me with people who are on the East Coast, the West Coast, abroad, and, and being able to see what their challenges are. And that sometimes you're talking directly with the competitor, someone who you're both selling the same ingredients to the same customers, but that doesn't mean that you can't be friends and that you can't be collaborators. So. Uh, IFT has definitely been an organization that I, I feel very indebted to having been a, a student scholarship recipient and then now being able to give back in my, now that I am a professional and, and out there in the working force. Awesome. So do you have any uh, last wise words or words of wisdom for somebody considering this occupation? Yeah, I would say if you think about your innate strengths and maybe you don't quite know what those are today, but you have a hunch, a, a gut intuition, and you really like chemistry. You like being in the bench top. You like working with your hands and problem solving. Maybe you don't get frustrated too easily. You kind of like to, to get into the details and experiment and, and you have the patience to keep going and pushing and, and to ask questions. I think just having innate curiosity about the way that the world works and asking questions is really important if you're ever considering being in science because we can all be scientists in that way of just wondering and thinking about the way that the world is and why it is that way. And then if you have that intuition that you want to apply that to something, uh, food science can be a wonderful thing that everyone connects to because we will always have to eat. So yeah. it is great job security in that way. Um, but it's also a, a very emotional connection that can motivate you every single day to, to continue not just working, but having a career that fulfills you and, and more than just that it's a paycheck, but that you know that you're contributing to helping people stay safe and healthy and providing a, a good food supply. Okay, well, thank you so much, Allison. I'm glad you uh, found passion in the field that, you, uh, that you're working in. That's a good yeah. day.